There's a few ways uh, in which um, infectious disease may impact uh, who we find sexually attractive. So, if, for example, in cultures where um, infectious disease is highly prevalent, uh, people tend to have place more emphasis on beauty. So, you know, skin free of any kind of pock marks, and also more symmetrical features, because what happens is that if you have uh, an infectious disease when you're young, it can um, derail development, and that's part of the reason why people's features may be a little bit more asymmetric if, they've, um, if they're more vulnerable to infectious disease. There's also um, evidence that uh, we're more attracted to people whose odors are signify that they have very different um, immune systems from ourselves. And the way it works is this, that uh, believe it or not, odor correlates with how your immune system functions. And we all vary individually in how susceptible we are to different kinds of infection. And basically, the research suggests that we're, uh, we're most attracted to people who are most different from us in terms of how their immune system functions. So uh, if we mate and have children, our children uh, are going to have very varied genes there. Um, and as a result, if, say, you know, a inf terrible infection uh, is spreading around, you might lose one child but you're not going to lose all your children because they're going to have very varied immune systems in terms of you know, what could make them sick and what they're more resistant to. I view gut bacteria as an extension of um, parasitic manipulation. Even though I don't think that most gut bacteria are parasites, I, in fact, I would call them symbiotic manipulators. Uh, and the reason uh, I'm so interested in them is because they do manipulate behavior you know, in, a, in a fashion not totally unlike uh, parasitic manipulators. And the way they're able to do this is there's uh, over a thousand different species of bacteria that um, inhabit our guts. And uh, there are species that churn out basically every single neurotransmitter that you have in your brain. Uh, and they churn out hormones, so stress hormones, uh, and, and hormones that regulate our appetite and energy levels. Uh, so the research suggests that the, the bacteria in our gut influence everything from, you know, whether you're energetic or sluggish, happy or sad, anxious and calm, maybe even whether you're fat or thin. Uh, and, and there is some research now um, Look, exploring uh, what fecal implants, uh, if, if, if you transplant uh, uh, feces from uh, one person to another, there, there's uh, looking to see uh, what some of the effects are. Uh, some uh, uh, examples would be uh, there have been efforts to show that by transplanting feces from one person to another that you may even be able to influence their appetite. Uh, so far, I don't think they've had too much success. Uh, there are one or two examples, though, of, for example, um, a woman who was getting the fecal transplant actually to treat uh, a, a digestive disease. Um, and uh, it's called uh, Clostridium difficile. So they have shown, by the way, the fecal transplant is very effective in treating some of these digestive disorders. And this particular woman uh, wanted to get the, um, the fecal donor. She wanted it to be her daughter, who was then around the 15 or 16 years of age. And um, within a short period of time of, after getting the fecal transplant, the mother suddenly, for the first time in her life, was starting to become overweight. And she actually eventually became obese. And she was convinced it was related to the transplant. And within just a year or two of her daughter being the donor, the daughter became obese. So there is um, th findings like that make scientists wonder if fecal transplant might actually, in future, um, you know, just as it can cause obesity, maybe if you get the donor from a thin person, maybe you can prevent obesity. It's not very, um, you know, appetizing to contemplate it. Um, you may be happy to hear that um, 
that scientists are hoping to just purify, uh, you know, the useful uh, strains of bacteria and then uh, concentrate them in a capsule. They call them crapsules. So they're hoping that they'll be able to use these capsules in, uh, instead of, you know, getting an actual, you know, uh, fecal transplant, which they do that using that uh, instrument like uh, that they use to do a colonoscopy. That's how they insert feces up your intestinal tract.